Hello again, everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the right hand wheel side of the Neki BU Mira that I've been uh, making videos on here lately. And I wanted to show this to you all. I've, I've shown in the past on other machine models uh, why removing the hand wheel is, is very helpful and important. Um, I'm going to show that <clears throat> to you guys today with the Neki here. And the Neki's have a, a number of unique features. Most machines you can't really say they're unique with their hand wheels per se. Uh, but the Neki is particularly unique. Uh, this one that I that I found recently, I was very excited to, to know that the paint was in good shape. Even the paint on the hand wheel, this sort of a cone shape hand wheel here, uh, convex shape to the to the wheel, uh, and then this beautiful you know chromed rim. Uh, the clutch knob, you'll notice it's not pitted. Uh, I don't even think there might be a slight, I don't know if there is a scratch, it's awfully fine. It's gorgeous. The chrome is beautiful. And it, it, it works in pretty much the way all of these clutch uh, stop washer systems worked. Uh, they're designed, of course, to disengage the drive shaft so you can wind a bobbin without your needle spinning up and down. Uh, so I'll take out or loosen the, uh, this is the set screw, and of course I'll hold the, the hand wheel still, and we'll turn to take the, the knob off, and behind this knob we will see, oh, there it is, the washer, right, and it, it's, it's styled differently, but it's pretty much uh, pretty similar to um, to those in other machines. Works the same way. Now I'm going to pull. Well, I said I was going to pull this off, uh, but it's it's. <laughs> I I was so optimistic. Oh, did I get ahead of myself there? Because um, hand wheels can be sticky. Even the singers can be. With Neki machines, because the tolerances were made so incredibly tight, which is, I mean, there's a plus side to that. Neki's have almost no vibration at all. But you'll notice that because of that tightness, you know, it's, it's, it's being stubborn. So, there are different ways I can address this. I can take oil. I can try to put a little sum around here. I don't know how much that will penetrate. I don't really start... If I'm not sure how st uh, stuck on something is, before I go to things like three-in-one penetrant oils, I try uh, normally just to, you know, I'll try something like sewing machine oil and see if that will, that, uh, see how that works. And if I want to get in further where the, where the, um, where the wheel attaches to the drive shaft here. And what else can I do? I can... Oh, I can pull back and forth. It's not budging. I could apply some heat. I'm going to be extra careful with my with my heat because I really don't want to harm this gorgeous paint. Uh, it's just it's just you don't see neckies every day with paint in this type of condition. And then there's another method that I have uh, that I can also use to help. Um, let's see if we can get some in here. Um, because I want you to see the inside of a Neki hand wheel. That's one of the reasons I did the video, not just to show you another hand wheel uh, removal, but to talk to you guys about why the Neki is so special. So uh, I've got a couple of different methods for how to do it. Uh, I have used rubber mallets or even the wooden handle of a, of a, like a rubber mallet and gently tapped it, you know, to come off. But I'd, I'd like to, to try, just let that oil sit there and maybe even apply a little bit uh, of, of heat. But again, I want to be very careful with that heat. Um, uh, you, you can tell I'm hesitant to, to put heat in here because even, even if I don't, even if the heat does not cause the paint to peel or bubble, um, it could change the color of, the, uh, of that beautiful paint. It could actually make it yellow and turn brown or something weird. And I, and I don't want that. It's just too pretty. Um, and I think getting some heat in here might be useful. Hmm. I'll 
tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to try something else and uh, before I try heat and see if that will take the get the wheel off safely. Okay, guys. I wanted to set up a way to get this hand wheel off and I've used different techniques before. I've had stuck hand wheels with all kinds of different machines including singers but a lot more seldom than with neckies. Neckies when I see them I think hmm I usually have my work cut out for me and you're gonna see why. <laughs> so anyway what I did was I took a little small terry cloth towel and I took notice I took wood not metal I took a wooden handle and I wrapped the terry cloth around the end like this and then I took, uh, let's change the angle here so you guys can see up a little bit better. And then I took a hammer and I very carefully and gently tapped on the, the left end of this wooden handle. And I kept tapping here. And notice I put the wooden handle right up against the rim. You have to do this carefully and with the towel because otherwise you're going to you're going to hurt the paint here on this end. And then after I did it there, I went on the other side of the spool pins and did both sides because I want to be really careful not to warp the hand wheel. That would not be cool. And anyway, I was tapping it. I didn't do it because I didn't want you guys to have to hear the, the loud smashing. But anyway, that's essentially what I did. And as I got more space, I did it very carefully. If you you might want to have someone with you to, to, to be ready to catch this because it, you know, as soon as you enjoy the, the, you know, the euphoria of getting the wheel off and it goes onto the floor and it scratches or bangs or, or you know, you don't want to do that, obviously. And anyway, as I was tapping this out, I, I kept adding sewing machine oil. I never added heat. Heat would have helped me, but uh, I would have potentially harmed the paint on the hand wheel. Uh, other hand wheels are not as tough to do this way and now you can see what was holding it on and why I was fighting so hard to get this off for you guys so the the paint looks gorgeous the chrome looks gorgeous nothing's been hurt but the first thing you want to know is that there is a bushing type piece on these machines and it's something to be aware of In fact, let me turn this toward you guys I want you to see this um, I had a Neki Mira one time and the piece that you see here it's it's one of the great ironies uh, of production back in these times this this entire uh, shaft end is brass I mean it is incredible it must have been very costly to make however the piece that it that um, this piece attaches to the drive shaft of the machine and you can see there's a there's like a big flat washer here and of course it's extra fancy and extra complex unfortunately the black section here is plastic whenever you're dealing with hand wheels on a necky the, one of the reasons you want to be extra gentle and slow and methodical is that you do not want to damage this this piece why they chose black plastic I don't know the rest of the machine is all gorgeous quality steel I, I really don't know I can't speak to it let's zoom in just a bit and you can get a closer view of it um, you know again it's one of these pieces and this machine will not work without this uh, I think it's some sort of bushing uh, I maybe not be using the right word forgive me that so you can see that this hand wheel may have never been off since 1953 you can see some of the corrosion on the brass I'm gonna be cleaning that up we'll uh, We'll put some alcohol on that and that should uh, help help us get it off um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys was that the Neki hand wheels are different look really closely guys uh, most of the time the hand wheels you know they're they're bored through and this is nothing but steel inside but with the Neki there is an extra feature which um, basically means there's a hollow ring inside and then there is wicking I believe it's some sort of wool felt wicking let's see if I can get a view of this it's it's kind of dark and greasy in there but um, if you guys can see in there and the reason it sits like this is that was it was designed to 
um, to be lubricated. So this, this piece was designed to come off. It's very possible once, you know, once the old Mechie dealers closed and people quit uh, taking these things in for regular maintenance, it could be that people forgot, you know, that this, this, this was a maintenance item. And so um, what I'm going to do is let's pan back just a bit and I'm going to show you. Uh, obviously, you want to, to clean any dirt or grime that's in here. Let's see if there, see if I can see any. Basically, you know, while you have the hand wheel off, you can take this around and just, I'm not going to polish that inside there. I just wanted any kind of dust that's stuck. And I've already cleaned the, the, the inside of the rim where the belt is going to go. But what I wanted you to see here was the fact that you need to lubricate. You think, well, how the heck do you lubricate a necky hand wheel? What you do is you take sewing machine oil. Actually, I want to clean some of this. Some of this metal corrosion is actually built up here on the rim. You can see, look at that green stuff, guys. This has been on here a long time. Uh, you know, when, when I tell people it's amazing that the machines even work at all, is because they've, most, most vintage sewing machines, <clears throat> uh, particularly once they've been handed down and bought and sold and given away a few times uh, over the years, they've often gone without their uh, required maintenance. And the fact that they still run is a testament to how tough they are, but it's not something you want to do, right? So I notice I'm getting rid of some of this, uh, this uh, patina, this is from the brass. It's gotten onto the steel. I want to get that off of there. Then we'll come around on this side, see what's, see what's there, what's trying to hide. Oh, this, this end wasn't so bad. And while I'm here, I can go ahead and go and get in that inside rim. But <clears throat> the main thing to take note of is that in order to, um, I think it's a piece of old, uh, looks like a piece of white uh, dry rotted rubber that came off of this um, uh, old bobbin winder tire uh, was, was caught down in there. But anyway, what you're going to do is once you clean the rim off and you've gotten any of that, that, that corrosion off, because that corrosion is what's causing these two pieces to stick together. And of course, it's the tight tolerances that Nikki had. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your sewing machine oil and the easiest way to do this without making too much of a mess is to kind of hold it, the wheel up vertically. And you're going to simply put sewing machine oil down into this. It's basically a crevice, right? It's a rim. And I'm just going to turn it and keep doing that. And there is a wick down in the hand wheel. And there's another piece of old, I don't know if that's a piece of thread or what that is. And there's... <coughs> Who knows? There it goes, a little thread remnant. <clears throat> but you're going to keep basically just turn it and you want to soak the wick with sewing machine oil. Not with just one drop. I would go ahead and, first of all, you kind of take a look in there. Use a flashlight if you need to. Sorry, I can't really hold the flashlight right now and do all this too. But what you're trying to accomplish is to soak this wick with sewing machine oil. Okay? And that is going to help. Uh, the idea behind this is that the wick would hold the oil and that the oil would keep the wheel lubricated, but it has to be taken off in service for that to happen. So again, we can't blame the engineers for that. That's, that's just, you know, lack of maintenance. And while we're here, I definitely want to get this old corrosion off. I want to get back down to the brass. Uh, I do not want to sand this. Um, because I, I really don't want to put any scratches in this amazing, amazing piece. You can see the alcohol is taking off the old uh, brass and bronze and copper all have, they often have this sort of green patina look to them. And this is, this is really something. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, as you go around, you can, you can turn it and, um, Let's see. Yeah, the alcohol is pulling it off, which is great. So as you can see, there are different ways to get these hand wheels off. I used the tapping method with oil, and it came off. But you, you can only tap so hard. If you tap too hard, you could 
You could warp the hand wheel. You can certainly apply heat. If you're afraid to use a heat gun, because heat guns can really destroy stuff really quickly. They get very hot. You can try a hair dryer or even a little space heater, but again, you gotta be real careful. You don't wanna cause any harm to the finish of the machine because that's part of its beauty. Um, and yet you gotta get some of this stuff um, you know, you got you ultimately want to get the hand wheel off if you can. Uh, some people might not, but I I know that I knew that it required lubrication, and I wanted to be able to get the hand wheel off so I could also more easily attend to something like this uh, bobbin tire. It's a lot easier to change when that hand wheel's not in the way. And so, uh, if you have a Necky BU Mira or any Necky, uh, I would suggest. While you have the hand wheel off, go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and clean this this hub here. This it has different names. I've seen it in a parts uh, listing for the Necky called a bushing. Um, it's again the Italians decided to go all out and do something extra fancy. You know they didn't have to, but they did. Um, and I see this sometimes today in Italian designed uh, uh, products. Uh, you see that a lot. Very creative in the way they did things. Um, and the later Necky machines would not be made with the same quality because Necky, just like Bernina and Pfaff and the other European companies, were under a lot of price pressure. You know, the cost of labor was going up after the war. And you have Jap the Japanese coming in and undercutting everyone. Remember, Japan was the country of outsourcing uh, after the Second World War. Uh, today, Japan is not a cheap place to produce things, but it once was. And uh, before the opening up of China and other parts of Asia, you would have, you basically had uh, Japan as a primary source, uh, and even Italy as well, until uh, the cost of production went, got higher in Europe. So I'm taking off this corrosion crud, for lack of a better word. And I don't know for sure. It's possible that I might be able to take some very fine uh, sandpaper, emery cloth, and sand this. But I think I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do after cleaning off this corrosion is I'm going to... Uh, you've seen me. I've already lubricated the inside of that hand wheel. And even before I finish, uh, even though I've done that, I'm still going to add some sewing oil onto here so that when the hand wheel goes on, we've got oil on both surfaces. That should help things. Um, again, the tolerances on these machines are incredible. Some of you who have Pfaff machines that were made in Germany, you will notice something very similar. Um, uh, you had... Uh, Basically, engineers saying no. We want the we want the the, the tolerances uh, very tight. And when we say tolerances, for those of you who may be wondering, what are you talking about? Tolerances has to do with how much space is tolerated between two parts, two moving parts. And uh, the reality is, uh, you will see more space on something like a Singer. But it doesn't hurt the singers. The singers are legendary, and there's there's nothing inferior about a singer. It was just you know a different uh, way of approaching it. But uh, the main the only difference any of this close tolerance really makes to my mind is I've just noticed that they um, they <clears throat> the machines from Italy and Germany typically have a little bit less vibration. If they're if they're running well and running correctly, so anyway, I'm, I've got the hand wheel off and I'm taking care of a number of things here. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this crappy bobbin tire and we'll see if any of it. Ooh, trying to get as little of this crap in the machine as possible. Wow. Um, today you can get bobbin tires. I haven't really seen any other colors, uh, and you can see the 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 remnants of of the old tire still sticking. I'll be cleaning this up with alcohol. It's not, not a big deal. And I'll be getting the new bobbin tire on there and then I'll get the hand wheel put back on. So again, if you are not comfortable with tapping your hand wheel off, 
because again, you gotta be real careful, guys. You could easily take your hammer and smack into your machine. You could dent it, scratch it, hurt it. Um, so again, if, if, I were, if I had more time in the middle of this video, I could have simply used penetrant oils. I could have let it, you can let it sit for a few days and even apply maybe some low hair dryer heat if you wanted to. But again, uh, all of these options for getting stuck parts loose or apart, all of these have some level of risk to the machine. So you want to be extra careful. And uh, like I say, on many of my machines, I never have a hard time with hand wheels. But if you get a necky from this period, don't be shocked or surprised if you uh, need to coax things, particularly something like a hand wheel off. And uh, I just feel lucky that the zigzag motion of this machine was in great shape and was not stuck because they often are. But I love Neckies so much, these Necky BU models, that I'm willing to, to, to fuss and, and struggle with it to get it to where it needs to be. Now, of course, I can even get in here and I can lubricate uh, these little couple of these parts in here that relate to the bobbin, uh, the bobbin winder. Uh, make sure that they're lubricated so they work well. The, the spring still has tension, so it's working. But again, you just want to make sure that everything is moving properly and spinning properly. And that is the remarkable and, of course, uniquely engineered Neki hand wheel with its inner self-lubrication properties. But you do have to maintain it. Uh, and again, just to show you how I'll put this back on, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take and put sewing oil all over this thing. Just make sure it's coated in oil. And of course, I've already uh, coated the inside of, of, this, uh, of this hand wheel, but I'm going to make sure I get the steel rim that is kind of uh, on, the, on, the, on the entry of both sides of the wheel before you get to that uh, oil wick. Now, let's see what happens when I put this back on. Well, it's still tight, <laughs> right? I'm gonna pull it on and pu push it on and pull it off, making sure that it does, in fact, move. And, it, and it's moving really well now. But again, take extra care, be extra mindful of this bushing because it is, you know, it's, it's survived almost 70 years intact and seems to be doing well. But it's, it's made of a hard plastic and, you know, plastic, is um, not forgiving. If it's old and tired and you're rough with it, you could crack it and then you have to find a replacement and they're very tough to find. So this was, like I said, getting the hand wheel off is, is not just a, you know, it's not a quick thing. You just want to say, oh, just get in there and do it. You need to really take your time and decide, do I want to use heat? Do I want to use um, chemicals or do I want to use, in my case, I use sewing machine oil and some tapping. If the tapping that I was doing, right, so, you know, if I'm tapping uh, at, a steady, at a steady pace, not too hard, and it's not coming off, then I would have had to go to maybe some three-in-one oil and some heat in order to get this wheel off. But again, and even then, you may have to do a little tapping, but always take extra care. I had, uh, you know, I had the little terry cloth covering this wooden piece so I didn't damage my paint. But for those of you who are doing this maybe for the first time, you might even want to cover the whole top of your machine with a towel or something. Again, the, the beautiful paint finish, you know, I really didn't want to, <laughs> this machine has survived in beautiful shape for so long, I didn't want to be the one to screw it up because I was trying to overhaul it. So uh, another thing I can do here is go ahead and take off the tire that's been on since 1952. And this is of course on the Wonder Wheel. And this was a wheel that Necky would have had made for this piece, and it's 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 crumbling onto my fingers. This is how old this thing is. <clears throat> no matter what brand you get, folks, uh, when it comes to rubber, vinyl, plastic parts, uh, particularly rubber and vinyl, they have a very you know they're just not inert, right? They're going to eventually. Uh, uh, need to be replaced when you're talking about in an archival way. This one's toast, right? If I tried to use it, it would just crumble and make a mess. And I, and I really don't want to do that to such a gorgeous machine. So anyway, I'll be taking, you guessed it, <laughs> cotton swabs, 
and I'll be uh, going in here and cleaning this out and I will be looking for a replacement tire. I believe I can find one. It's not going to be easy, but I will keep looking. There are enough of these neckies out there that hopefully, uh, you can see the little crud coming off of there. Uh, there are enough of these out there that hopefully someone has one because it would be kind of fun if I can get the Wonder Wheel parts all together. If I don't, then that'll be, uh, uh, that'll be something for another day, but I'm willing to try. And uh, in the meantime, uh, if any of you have ever restored a Neki, whether it was a, it doesn't have to be this model, it could be any other model, uh, list it in the comments below. Share your thoughts. Let me know what you think of the Neki's. The people that I know who love Neki's, they love them a lot. <laughs> They're very dedicated and loyal to them. As you guys know, I have so many machines that I like that I've come across over the years that I, uh, it's hard for me to say there's just one, you know, great machine. There are a ton of great machines and it really depends, as I've mentioned before, on what is it you're trying to accomplish with your sewing, right? Um, if you have a specific um, uh, model that you love, you may love it because it does what you need it to do if you're a sewer. Now, some of you collect machines just because you think they're cool, and I think that's wonderful. You know, save the machines no matter what, even if even if you're not doing a lot of sewing. I mean, good grief, the reason I don't keep uh, uh, all the machines that I, that I work on is because I don't sew very much. That's not really where my interest lies. Um, if I ever make a video of me doing any sewing, uh, we might have to create a new category series called a comedy series, because I'm sure there will be a lot of laughs, but... You know, if you can't laugh at yourself, um, yeah, you, you gotta you gotta be able to do that sometimes. I think. Anyway, thank you all for watching and listening to me talk on and on about the hand wheel of a Nikki B Humira. If you can, <laughs> I guess there's nothing in vintage sewing machines you couldn't make a video of if uh, if someone finds it useful, and I hope you guys did find this useful. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and stay tuned for more videos to come.